All right, good morning and happy Thursday. Uh, keep your eyes out tomorrow for another school net quiz over 10 4 to 10 6. The bulk of that quiz is going to be over 10 6. So that's where I wanted to start today. As always, feel free to email me or comment on the Google Classroom for any extra resources that you might need um, or any videos that you might want in order to review for that. So 10 6 again is what we're starting with today. And let's look at this diagram over here. Now, our theorem was when two chords intersect. So when I've got those two intersecting chords, I'm going to take one part of a chord, so AE, And I'll multiply that by the other part of the same chord. So AE times E B and we'll set that equal to the same process on the other chord. So AE times E B equals C E one part of the second chord times DE, the other part of the same chord. So we're going to keep that theorem in our mind as we solve these first four. Um, I'll go over one, two, and four, I'm going to skip three, I'll leave three for you to finish, and then we'll talk about five and uh, that brings us to our, our last section of ten, ten, five. So number one again, we're taking one part of one of the chords and I'll start with X just because that's what we're trying to solve for times the other part of the same chord, so x times 4, equals 8 times 6. So one part of the second chord times the other part of that same chord. So 4x, let me do that in a different color, 4x equals 48. So if I divide by 4, x is just 12. Again, you know, why don't you guys pause the video here, try these next two, and then if you want to, you can always come back and, uh, and see how four went. So same idea, number two. We're going to take one part of a chord. doesn't matter what you start with. So I could start with five or six or ten or x. It really doesn't matter. But five times x... equals 10 times 6. So 5x is 60. And if I divide by 5, then x equals 12 again. All right. So you got another 12. Number 3, the thing you've really got to look out for, that part's 5. And this is marked as congruent, so... This must be 5. And let's take a second and talk about that theorem again. If this chord here is cut by a perpendicular bisector, so it's cut in half, it's bisected, and it's at a right angle, then where does this chord here have to go through? If it goes through the middle of that 10 length chord. So if, if this chord right here goes right down the middle of the other one, cuts it at a right angle, then this must go through the center. So I don't really know where the center is. You know, it's kind of hard to just eyeball that, but I know it's somewhere on that line. And the last one here 
I'm just going to take 9 times 4x equals 8 times 4x plus 2. So things that you really got to be worried about here, making sure that you distribute to both parts. So 36x equals 32x plus 2. And what mistake did I make here? Well, I just told you that you really need to be worried about distributing to both parts. And, you know, you can see here, I didn't do that. So always be careful about that. 32x plus, not 2, but 16. And then if I subtract 32x from both sides, then I'm left with 4x equals 16 and x equals 4. And over here, x would be 12.5. So let's do this last one here. This is about the circular stone mound in Ireland. There's a picture of it down in the bottom right corner here. It uh, has a diameter of 250 feet. So all the way across the circle is 250 feet. And this part right here is 62. So 62. And I want to find out this part. So the whole thing is 250. This part is 62. What's the rest? Well, I can take 250, subtract 62 to get 188. So what they want is they want to find the perpendicular distance, x, from the end of that passage right down the middle. So you can see here, you can enter the stone mound, walk through it. And they want to find the distance from the center, from this path, to the edge. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to say 188 times... 62 equals, and now what are the two parts of the other chord? It's x times x. So what we've got here is 188 times 62 equals x times x, or x squared. So... Let's see, what is 188 times 62? That would be 11,656 equals x squared. And then if I take the square root of that, that would be 100 and... Seven point nine six. And let's see what what units are we using? We're using feet. Okay, we're gonna skip number six for right now, and we're gonna go right into our last two types of problems. So what we're gonna look at is a different situation where we've got either two secants or a secant and a tangent. So what we've got here is, if you remember, we've got, instead of the two parts multiplied together, we've got the part outside the circle, and we've got the whole secant. So those are the two 
two numbers will end up multiplying together, the part outside the circle and the whole secant. So we've got let's, 5 is the part outside the circle up top, so 5 times, and what's the whole secant here? 5 is outside, 13 is inside. So the whole thing, I just add up 5 and 13 to get 18. So 5 times 18 equals, all right, now what's the part outside the circle here? Well, that's 4. And the whole secant, they were nice enough to give me as x. So 90 equals 4x. And x would be 20. No. Two and a half. Yeah. So I could ask you to find, you know, even this part. If that's 22 and a half, then this part must be 22 and a half is the whole secant minus 4 is 18 and a half. Um, I won't ask you that on the quiz, but it's something that I could ask you. And number 8, same kind of setup. So why don't you guys pause the video uh, and do number 8, and then we'll do 9 together. So number eight, part outside the circle is five. The whole secant here is five's outside, ten is inside. So five plus ten is fifteen. We'll set that equal to three times the whole secant, which is just x. So. 75 equals 3x, so x must be 25. And then again, I could, could ask you to find this piece right here. If the whole thing is 25, then this must be 22, because 22 plus 3 gets me 25. Alright, now let's look at numbers 9 and 10. So we've got part inside the circle is 3. Whole secant is, I'm sorry, outside the circle is 3. The whole secant was 8 equals part outside times the whole secant. Now, how did we find the whole secant here? How did we know that was 8? Well, we took 3 plus 5. Same thing here. We're going to take 4 plus x and then I'll add 4 and x together so 4 plus x is how we would represent that okay so 24 let me do a different color uh, let's do blue 24 equals and again just like I said earlier, we've got to do our distribution, our distributive property to both parts. So 4 times 4 plus 4x, or 16 plus 4x. And if I subtract the 16 over, we get 8 equals 4x. So x is 2. And once you guys pause the video, I want you to do 12. So we've got, let's see. Part out, 
side is 8, the whole secant is 12. Now, I'm not sure what the part outside is. You know, we can call that y. And we could say the whole secant is y plus 10. And we can set it up the other way with x uh, in a minute here. I just wanted to start off this direction because I think it connects to what we've been doing a little bit better, this method of solving. So 80, 96 equals y squared plus 10y. So y squared plus 10y plus 96. And again, what we want to do, the reason why we did this equals 0 because anytime we've got a y squared or an x squared, we're going to try and factor this to solve. So we're going to try to factor that one. So y squared plus 10y. Ooh, and that should be my mistake, minus 96. We subtract 96 from both sides. So my mistake, minus 96. We want to factor this, so we're going to try to find the factors of 96 that add up to 10. So let's see, I could do 48 and 2, but that's not going to work. I could do, let's see, what are my factors of 96? Uh, I don't think, th no, 3 would go in. 3 and, hmm, 3 and 32, that's not going to work. 4 and 24, so I could do 2 and 48, 3 and 32, 4 and 24, 6 and 16. And that one looks like it's going to work. So 6 and 16. But I want a positive 10y. So I want to do 16 minus 6. Okay. So let me erase all this junk. 16 minus 6. So my final factored form is y minus 6, y plus 16, which means our answers, the roots of this function would be positive 6, because 6 minus 6, so if y is 6, 6 minus 6 is 0, and a negative 16. So basically all you're doing there is you're flipping the signs. And since I can't have a negative distance, I'm going to say y equals 6. But I want to solve for x. So x is the whole secant so my final answer, the thing I'm really searching for, is the whole secant here, x, which is 6 plus 10, or 16. And if you wanted to do this a different way, uh, you could set this up as... You 
could say eight times four equals x minus 10 times 10 because, you know, if this is x, to find this piece, I'm going to take the whole thing and I'll subtract 10. So, it, you know, if x is 16, I'll take 16 minus 10 to get 6. So that's where the that's where the x minus 10 comes from. I just think it might be easier um, to set up a new variable here and just say, well, I'll make a new variable and then I'll solve for x. So our last our last problem type here, these last two, same idea. I'm only going to do number 11. I'll leave number 10 for you guys. So we're going to say 4 is a part outside the secant, or secant, outside the circle. The other part of the secant is 12. So the whole secant is 16. So 4 times 16, the whole secant is 16, equals the part of this one outside the circle times this whole tangent, which is x. So 64 equals x squared, which means that x must be the square root of 64, which is 8. And I'll leave number 10 for you guys to do, just to keep this video a little bit shorter. It's already running kind of long. All right, and we've got... 10, 5, this is our last type of problem. These two problem sets, I'm going to do the top left corner and the bottom right corner of each. I'll leave the other two for you guys to do. And uh, I'll post the completed notes right after the video. So number 13, let's look at this. When two chords are intersecting, We've got a couple of arc measures, a couple of minor arcs. They're both less than 180. And we have this angle measure in the middle, these two vertical angles. So when it's inside the circle, again, what do we do? Well, I've got these two arcs. And if I'm intersecting inside the circle, you know, is it better to be inside or outside nowadays well you know at this point in time i'd say it's a better thing to be indoors stay at home and and uh, stay healthy so it's a positive thing to be indoors so i'll say 175 and 55 are these two arc measures they're inside which is a, a positive thing i'll add them together and since i've got these two angles that form those arcs, so those two angles, then I've got to divide by two because I have those two angles and that gets me 175 plus 55 is 230 divided by two which is 115. So each one of these two angles, because they're vertical, they're the same, is 115 degrees. So why don't you guys solve 14, and uh, I'll give you the answer here in a second, and then we'll do 16. So same thing for 14, we end up with, again, 115 degrees, and 16, we're going to do the same setup, we'll say, you know, add the two arcs together, divide by 2, so 55 
plus 5x plus 15. We divide it by 2. And what's that measure? What's that vertical angle measure in there? Well, that's 60 degrees. And you could very well simplify the left side. I mean, that would be fine. I think an easier approach might be to get rid of this fraction. So how do I get rid of dividing by 2? Well, the opposite of dividing by 2 is just multiplying by 2. So now I've got 55 plus 5x plus 15 equals 120 or 5x if I subtract off the 55 and 15 5x equals 70 I'm sorry 5x equals 50 minus 55 minus 15 5x equals 50 so x equals 10 And why don't you guys, again, set up number 15 here, solve for x, and then uh, you can check with the completed notes in a minute. So we've got four more problems. Again, I'm only doing the top left corner and the bottom right corner. Um, and then I'll leave the, the other two for you guys to solve. So number 17, this is where we have the intersection outside the circle for these last four. So it's a similar idea. What were we doing here? Well, we were taking the two arc measures, adding them up, and dividing by two. Well, it's a similar idea down here. We're still going to take our two arc measures, so we'll still take our two arc measures, 140 and 50. Still looking for an angle. But since we're outside the circle, you know, being outdoors, not exactly a good thing right now. Uh, you know, in some places, it's a very negative thing to be outside. So... I'm going to take my two arc measures and I'll subtract them. It's a negative thing to intersect outside the circle. So 140 minus 50, because it's outside the circle, that angle that we're looking for. So 140 minus 50, still dividing by 2 to get the measure of angle R. So I've got 90 over 2 equals a measure of angle R, and R equals, angle R equals 45 degrees. So the measure of angle R is 45 degrees, and uh, why don't you guys take a second, try 18, I'll give you the answer here really quick, and then we'll do 20 together. So 175 minus 57 is 118, divided by 2 is 59. And number 20, same setup, so that's not going to change. 13x plus 7 minus 60, because again, angle is outside the circle, divided by 2 gets me 5x minus 10. And like we said before, you know, you could you could simplify this. That would be fine. Um, but you're going to get some some decimals. So what I'm going to suggest is we get rid of this fraction. And how do I get rid of dividing by 2? 
Well, I can multiply by 2. And then make sure you distribute to both parts. So 13x plus 7 minus 60 is minus 53 equals, distribute to both parts, 10x minus 20. So if I subtract 10x and add 53 to both sides, then I end up with three x equals thirty three and x equals eleven. Nineteen is actually a little bit easier. So again I'll post the